I spent the first few years of my young adult life on the very forefront of US foreign policy. And I did that because I wanted to make a change in the world. I wanted to do good things for other people. This is Afghanistan. This is the Chagall Valley. Whether you know it or not, Afghanistan is a very beautiful country. And the only thing that's more beautiful than the terrain is the children that live there. Does anybody else in this room have the feeling that Afghanistan is going to be another Vietnam? All the pain, the sacrifice, and the hardship? I felt that way for a very long time, too. Uh, so once I departed the military in 2006, I started traveling the world, trying to serve my country in other ways. I was in Asia, Africa, and all throughout the Middle East, and I have this idea that happened in Afghanistan. Uh, I got hired by a company called Remote Medical International, and they were a young startup company in Seattle, and what they did is they provided doctors and medics and clinics to commercial operations that were working in difficult regions. And an opportunity popped in Afghanistan, and we're sitting in the boardroom, and everybody looked at me and I said, okay, I guess I'm going to Afghanistan. When I walked into that factory, there were 300 people working. Each one of those people supported five to 13 family members. They were taking unskilled people off the street and they were teaching them to be cobblers and tailors. I looked to my half left and there on this table, it is. Brown and tan, it was ugly and cool. It was a combat boot sole with a flip-flop thong punched through it. Combat flip-flop. You know, the juxtaposition of the two words. Creating a beach flip-flop in a combat boot factory to make good on the opportunity and the promises that we made to the Afghans between our two nations. But real businesses solve real problems, right? Real products solve real problems. If you have a problem, if you ask why six times, you can typically get to the root cause of a problem. And the problem that I was having, the problem that I wanted to solve, is my friends were still deploying to these countries and they were still coming home in flag-covered boxes. I was really getting tired of it. So how are these young teenage boys getting training, getting weapons, getting arms, getting smuggled across borders, and then given instructions and plans to attack uniformed service members? Well, they were out on the street. They were susceptible to influence you know, due to an unstable home. Well, why is their home unstable? Well, dad's dead. Can't mom take care of that? Well, you know, mom is a lot younger than dad because you know, the women there are typically married at 12 or 13 years old to much older men. And then the husband passes and then the burden falls onto the wife and she has no employable skills. So the kids have to go out on the street. Well, why doesn't mom have employable skills? Well. She wasn't allowed to go to school. She wasn't allowed to go to school. So in our chain of thought, and when we asked this root cause, if we just empowered and educated women, we could have the long-term effect of solving this problem. So we said, every product that we sell, we're going to put our girl in school for a day in Afghanistan. And over the course of two or three decades of this work, we are going to resolve this issue. This is a woman-owned and woman-operated factory in Kabul, Afghanistan, running at full capacity, making sarongs and scarves. And each piece they manufacture help puts a little Afghan girl in school. You can manufacture peace through trade. If we are persistent, if we are creative, if we are respectful for one another, we can put down our differences, we can solve our problems, and we can depend on one another. Welcome to the Unarmed Forces. Thank you.